Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox podcast. Today we're talking about what to wear, specifically (laughs) capsule wardrobes for interviewing and jobs and just generally what we have learned recently about cleaning out our closets. Your Law School Toolbox hosts are Allison Monahan and Lee Burgess. That's me. We're here to demystify the law school and early legal career experience so you'll be the best law student and lawyer you can be. We're the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website, Career Dicta. Allison also runs the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review or rating on your favorite listening app. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us via the contact form on lawschooltoolbox.com, and we'd love to hear from you. And with that, let's get started. Welcome back. Today, we're chatting about something that we actually end up talking about a lot, which is what to wear, specifically the idea of creating a capsule wardrobe. And we don't really talk about clothes because either of us particularly loves fashion, (laughs) which is not true. Um, But both of us have recently had experiences with cleaning out our closet, realizing what we do and don't use, and also traveling. So some of these lessons have surprised us and allowed us to live a more minimal clothing life. Yeah. So, um, guys, if you're listening, there are definitely lessons for you here as well. <laughs> but we also have a specific men's style podcast with an expert that we can link to in the show notes so yeah. you can get some of your tips there. Yeah, I mean, it's always interesting to me because we periodically go through our Google Analytics and our what to wear <laughs> so blog popular. posts are still so popular. Um, so I think it always comes up that people want to talk more about this subject. And I think it's because how to dress professionally and or comfortably or how to budget or just not how to get overwhelmed by this, especially as you enter a new profession, um, can be really stressful. Yeah, exactly. I think clothing is stressful for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. I'm definitely not a person who loves to go shopping. Mm -hmm. In fact, I kind of hate to go shopping. (laughs) Um, And I also basically wear the same thing pretty much all the time. But then it really throws me for a loop when I have something else that I need clothes for. Mm -hmm. So as we were talking about, you know, we've both kind of gone through this shift, I think, of thinking about clothes and how to dress ourselves and uh, a little bit differently. So Alison, why don't you start? Share a bit about how you've recently started to change your perspective on clothes and what you've needed based on kind of what's been going on in your life. Well, I mean, a lot of this came for me when I moved to Mexico and I thought I was just going to stay there for a few months. So, you know, obviously I pared down my wardrobe drastically. I took everything out of my closets because I was going to be subletting my apartment, moved it all to my garage. So actually still three years later, I now have some very nice clothing sitting in my garage from my life as a lawyer in a, you know, hanger type thing. Um, But it was fascinating because, you know, I brought very minimal stuff with me and I found out I still didn't wear three quarters of it. Um, So, you know, and then when, of course, when I came back, I had to go through stuff I hadn't touched in years. Um, I mean, occasionally I've opened the garage closet, but I mean, you know, there are literally thousands of dollars worth of clothing down there that, you know, there are nice suits, there are nice Thomas Pink shirts, and then mm-hmm. it's kind of like, am I ever going to wear this again? Right. But then what do you do with this expensive shirt? You know, there's a, I think there's a lot of angst around this. And yeah. then, you know, everybody has pressures around, like, what do you look like? And do you look presentable? And do you feel good about it? Um, yeah, I think we were talking about a book that I picked up recently called, I think it's Beyond Beautiful. It was a really interesting idea where she's like, you know, for women, like, you're kind of given this message that if you're not beautiful or attractive like you have to somehow aspire to that I'm like we don't tell men that you know it's nobody's true. out telling donald trump he needs to lose weight to live his best life mm-hmm. um and so it was a really interesting kind of shift you know away from kind of like oh body positive we're all beautiful she's her point is like why does it matter mm-hmm. you know why is that so important i think that to me was really eye it's like yeah why does it matter i don't care right you know <laughs> like why do i feel this pressure to be like oh have to be like beautiful all the time and it's like no that's ridiculous yeah yeah and i think that you know, as you're entering a new profession, um, it's an interesting time to think about what you want that image to be. You know, how much do you care about that kind of stuff? How much I think for women, especially is is how much time do you want to invest in? Yeah, the hair, the nails, Mm -hmm. the like makeup, Makeup. everything. Yeah. And a lot of this really depends on where you live. Let's be honest. Yeah, because different parts of the country, you can get away with different stuff. Yeah. I mean, in Texas, I don't feel like I could walk out the house. In fact, we met someone at a conference once who said, oh, it's so liberating to be in San Francisco, because when I'm at home in Texas, I feel like I can't walk out of the house without perfect hair and makeup. And Mm -hmm. we're like, oh, yeah, we don't do that here. (laughs) (laughs) That is not a thing. I have to go to an event tonight. And I was thinking I might curl my hair. That was like, that's my big. I'm I'm basically like, oh, (laughs) I should probably like wash my hair today if I have to 
to like go out. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a five minute makeup job. But you know, this is a very different reality that she had where she's like, if I leave the house without makeup, people start calling me being like, are you sick? Yeah. You know, what's happening? I just don't have the energy for that. Well, that's why we live in San Francisco. Exactly. So my recent lessons kind of around this were, um, so I've been pregnant twice in the last um, like five years and, you know, eventually your clothes stop fitting. <laughs> so you have right. to basically create this idea of almost a capsule wardrobe because you have to start buying individual pieces. Um, and you really start to, most of us, I think, break yourself of this problem of like, what if I wear the same sweater twice a week? Or what if I, yeah. you know, what what if I wear this gray sweater <laughs> over this dress and then I wear it over this other thing? And it's like, well, how many gray sweaters am I going to buy? Well, I'm huge and pregnant. You're only huge and pregnant for a short period of time. Um, and so I think it was really interesting to kind of like, buy, and I would also just buy what I would need. You know, I would wait until like, I could not wear a certain pants anymore. And then I would have to go buy pants. And then I buy like, these leggings and I buy blue leggings and black leggings and then I would just kind of alternate blue and black leggings. Yeah, I'm, and, a, I'm a big fan of the same exact item in multiple colors. Yeah, but it was very <laughs> freeing and I think, you know, getting dressed it was like, oh, what's clean, you know, of these like, you know, five to ten things that I could actually um, use and I, I think that I started to realize how wasteful and how much energy I was spending trying to find things that like looked good in my closet when I you know, on a normal day to day basis, when I'm like, I, I only have these clothes that fit. And then I just looked like myself in them. And when you're pregnant, like most women, I think there's just freedom in it of like, this is how I look. <laughs> like, like, like I can't really do anything <laughs> about it. And this is my bikini body, <laughs> right? This is my bikini body. I'm, I'm embracing it. And I think there's a freedom that comes with that. You know, then I think there's all this kind of crazy pressure of like getting your body back, which is a total farce because once you have birthed children and fed children, there is you go to a different body. You <laughs> you find your new body because your old body is gone. But um, but I think that there are also some really important lessons um, with love and kindness of dressing a body that has birthed babies and maybe is not, you know, could be breastfeeding and is not losing weight as fast as you would like or you're being told you're supposed to, you know, lose weight. And then how are you dressing that body and the fact that then you are in between your clothes. You Maybe your pre-baby clothes don't fit, but your maternity clothes look crazy on you because you don't have a gigantic <laughs> belly. And so I think I really learned about this idea of kind of focusing on what I have and what I need for where I am and then you start to realize that there's a whole bunch of stuff in your closet that maybe you haven't touched in years and that you probably don't need to be holding on to and maybe you shouldn't be investing in stuff that you can't wear at that moment. Right. I think that's true. I mean, I think a lot of this is just about what choices are you making. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of this for people who are in law school, as you mentioned, is kind of like what image do you want to be presenting? And there can be all kinds of pressure around that. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember having conversations when we were, I was doing job interviews or clerkship interviews about like, well, do you have to wear a skirt suit? And I'm just like, it's not all you're like, this is so ridiculous. Like, are yeah. we really talking about this? I know. But we were talking about it. And, you know, sometimes I put on the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've used this terminology, but it might take, behoove us to take a second to just define kind of what a capsule wardrobe is. Because I think if you Google it, there are definitely different definitions. But basically the idea is you buy core pieces, you know, some pants, maybe a couple dresses, but basically very basic pieces, usually of a high quality. So you can wear them a lot and wash them a lot. And then you add on to that like a touch of trendy items, not like a whole wardrobe of trendy items, right. but maybe it's like a statement necklace or shoes or a bag or something like yeah, that. Like a fun colored uh, shirt. Exactly. Or a jacket or whatever it might be, but that your core wardrobe pretty much stays the same. Um, and, and this may be seasonal. It's true. Yeah, depending on where you live. Like we kind of live in a place with one season. Right. But like in New York, <laughs> you're going to have a different set of capsule mm -hmm. pieces for the summer versus the winter. Yeah. And I think you can kind of think about it is in the way you would pack for a trip. You know, you typically, if you read about the best way to pack, so you like pick a color scheme. You know, is it going to be black or is it going to be brown? You know, and then right. it's like, you know, you maybe take two pairs of pants, but then you take, you know, five pair different tops or two pairs of pants in one dress. And then you have different pieces to mix and match. So if you're gone for two weeks, it looks like you have two weeks worth of clothing. And I think there are some interesting kind of blogs out there and, and things that can show you how, you know, I think there was one I saw a while back that was like, with these five pieces, I can create, you know, 20, 30 outfits. Right. And it's really possible when you start to think about it. So if you look at your professional wardrobe or even your personal wardrobe through this lens and say, okay, I have a job that's going to be five days a week, 
you know, I probably need some black slacks and I mean, some, maybe a skirt and, but you're not going to want, you know, to have five very specific looks because you want to be able to slightly switch them up. So the right. next week you can revamp a lot of that stuff. Right. And if something's and have cleaners, a new order. So. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so you're really limiting your trendy items. You're investing in pieces that are going to last a bit longer. Um, so even though individual items might end up costing a bit more, you're not buying as many items. And so the idea is that you're saving money in the end because you're not, you know, you're not buying 10 pairs of jeans. You're buying two pairs of jeans. Yeah. And you can also look for sales. Like I had an amazing Bloomingdale sale the other day where it's mm-hmm. like 50% off the clearance. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like you can buy things at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know the Nordstrom annual sale yeah. is happening while we're recording this. Yeah. So you can kind of keep an eye out because a lot of the you know if you buy these sort of more expensive pieces on sale you're going to get a much higher quality item that is much more likely to last mm-hmm. typically not always right uh, but if you're smart about it you know you can get pieces that you can wear literally 10 or 20 years yeah which is really nice heck some of my i just said heck that's not what am I, <laughs> heck, i've been hanging out with small children this weekend um but i think that you know, one of the things I've learned is sometimes it's like you invest in t-shirts because you're like, oh, I'll just get these cheap t-shirts. And then they're constantly getting holes in them. Mm-hmm. And I get really frustrated when my because then I have to expend energy to replace them. Right. <laughs> it makes me really angry because I'm like, I don't have time to go find new t-shirts. Yeah, I think you're better off finding something that fits, that's attractive on you, and that seems to be pretty high quality. And then purchasing that. I mean, assuming you have a reason to wear it. That's right. the other thing. I yes. mean, I definitely am guilty of purchasing items oh, for sure. the life that I thought or somehow in some weird diluted <laughs> version of the life that I thought I had. Yeah. Um, this ended to happen to me mostly when I went to like expensive boutique stores, like when I first started being a lawyer. And I literally had nothing to wear. And I basically presented myself and was like, OK, so I'm starting a job as a lawyer. I need to be dressed. Please mm-hmm. dress me. I don't the stuff they gave me. Some of it I wear all the time. But some of the pieces, it was like, wow, that is really beautiful. I have never worn it. Yeah. It was expensive. I feel bad about that skirt. (laughs) I know. It's true. So one of the things that I think every law student ends up having to invest in is this idea of a suit. Mm -hmm. You know, you either one or usually two suits for some interviews. Um, So I think that when you're looking to invest in this, I, I think approaching it from kind of this capsule perspective of, Buying suits that can be reimagined in different ways makes yeah. a lot of sense. So, you know, maybe I remember I had a friend who wore red suits to interviews. Oh, wow. Well. And I was like, well, that's, that's a little intense. That's a little intense. But also, like, how do you change the red suit? Like, if you wear the red suit to your yeah. first round and then you show up in the red suit, they're like, call oh, back. They're like, the oh, that's suit. the girl in the red suit. But if you, <laughs> like, I, my suits, I had a black suit and then I had this kind of like brownish gray suit and I could make those look completely different. You know, yeah, I think I had a black a black set, which was like skirt and pants. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I think, two different pinstripe, kind of like subtle pinstripes. But for me, I went kind of more crazy with the shirts mm. for the black. Obviously mm-hmm. not for the pinstripes. Right. That was white. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I just had a boring, it was like, it was like a Brooks Brothers, you know, mm-hmm. it was something super conservative that I found really boring. Mm-hmm. But it was completely appropriate to everything I wore it to. And then I kind of jazzed it up by getting some really loud Thomas Pink shirts. Yeah. With like pink stripes and purple stripes. Mm-hmm. And there are people did comment sometimes like, wow, that shirt is like really pretty brave. I'm like, brave? It's a shirt. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like under a Brooks Brothers, like super conservative seat. Yeah. But for me, like, I felt like I wanted to express a little bit of personality, but not be like the person in the red suit. Right. So one of the things, especially if you're planning on doing interviews where you're going to need to travel is you when you start shopping for a suit and what you're going to invest in, you want to make sure that it can be packable. Yeah, I think this is where people sometimes go wrong. Mm -hmm. They think like, oh, I'll go to like Uniqlo and buy my suit there. And it's like, that is probably cotton. Mm -hmm. Like you probably need something that's wool that is not going to wrinkle as much. You know, you've got to think like, are you going to have to get this dry clean when you arrive in order to wear it? That does not seem like a reasonable thing to do. Right. So this is definitely one of those places where thinking a little bit more about the material and the weight of it and the quality of it, I think, you know, is going to make your life easier in the long run. You know, and when I was doing the podcast with Douglas Hand, who is the guest on the guys podcast, when we were talking about style. He was saying that there is um, a great opportunity for buying secondhand items mm. now, especially through things like thread up and yeah, the real real. And um 
consignment stores too, but depending on where you live, it may not be as possible. But you can do some very targeted shopping and with a little bit of notice, you can probably buy some of these pieces at a heavy discount Mm -hmm. and be able to get a better quality piece that will travel better. I mean, it's just the reality is if the fabric is made out of different (laughs) different material, it's going to really just comes a lot of it down to fabric. Yeah. So that's another thing that you can consider. You know, let's say you're listening to this and it's the you're a one L and you're thinking, well, I may need to be interviewing in the winter or the spring, then, you know, maybe starting to do some online test shopping because it may take you a few tries to get what you need. But there are definitely some ways that you can um, invest in some, you know, higher value items without paying these like exorbitant prices. Yeah. You don't want to do what I did, which was find out you had an interview scheduled over Christmas. And then I happened to be in Atlanta where my grandmother lived and I did not have a suit. And so, you know, I'm trying to buy like a conservative <laughs> suit for law firm interviews in Atlanta, like the Nordstrom's or whatever. And mm-hmm. it was just like, I mean, everything they had was like pink and roughly and it was just totally different style. And I mean, I literally couldn't buy anything, which mm-hmm. is pretty sure how I ended up with Brooks Brothers when I returned to New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely thinking about fabric and making sure it's packable. And I think you want to think about your shirts too. Um, if you don't like now to iron. You, how you're going to pack them. And how you're going to pack them. Um, I think that for women, one of the challenges is, especially if you're someone who's a little more busty, um, you've got to watch like the buttons and the, you know, I think a lot of times we are told like, this is the uniform. And then if you look like frumpy and kind of unkept in that, then, and you don't feel good, that's not going to present yourself in the way you want to be presented. So button up shirts, like collared shirts do not look good on me. And so I just like freed myself and was like, I will not wear them. Yeah. I (laughs) think you can wear shell there's certain yep. ones that are cut more feminine like that mm-hmm. was actually why i bought the thomas pink ones is they were cut for boobs mm-hmm. and not square um yeah. you know all the way down so they basically were cut for women um and again like they were pricey but in the end like they fit me a lot better than like most other things would have yeah and i primarily wore shells and i they were great. <laughs> I never complained about them. I always looked good. And, I, you know, I didn't have to worry about buttons, like moving or anything like that. So you and again, you, it depends totally on the area, right? The like where Yeah, where you're interviewing and, you know, what your build is like. But I think the key is when you go start trying things on is you want to balance that like, what am I supposed to look like with what am I going to be confident in? And you don't want to be fidgeting with your clothes. No, and you don't want to look it's like you're wearing some like outfit that you don't right. feel comfortable, you know, some costume. Sometimes you'll feel like they're dressing up in a costume mm-hmm. and I think that can be problematic. Yeah. You know, you've got to find some way to kind of harmonize looking like a professional with looking like yourself and feeling like yourself. And, you know, there are all kinds of reasons that this could be challenging for people. Yeah. Um, I mean, luckily there are a lot more options now, I think. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're still going to have to really give a lot of this some thought in terms of developing your professional style. Right. And, you know, taking elements of, you know, the way that you dress and incorporating them in, but remembering that especially for interviews and when you're a, a young starting out professional, you want to be probably err on the more conservative side because you don't want people talking about how wild you are, you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's certain things that are always going to be basically appropriate. Mm-hmm. And then you go off that script yeah. kind of as you wish for, you know, typically, I mean, hopefully for a good reason, not just because. Right. So, um, you know, I think this idea of pr- developing your first professional wardrobe can be a big challenge. You know, my friends, especially who worked at DA's offices or, um, U.S. Attorney's offices where you have to wear suits every day. That can be a real challenge well, all of a sudden out although, of the gate. Honestly, I feel like that's easier in some ways mm. than business casual because a suit is a uniform. That's you know, true. If you have, say, three different suits that you can mix and match pieces from, you've got your you know, skirt, you've got your pants, like you've got your shoes, you just throw it all together and walk out of the house. Like yeah. you're always going to look fine. Yep. Business casual is like a whole other, whole other place. That's true. Yeah. But I think business casuals wear the capsule wardrobe can be right. very helpful. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, ideally, you kind of want to make your business casual wardrobe essentially as easy as the suit wardrobe. Yeah. So if you are like thinking, OK, well, then how do I build this capsule wardrobe? You know, you really have to kind of look at your life and just decide what are these core pieces going to be, right. you know, for the office or for your personal life. So for the office, you might need a pair of tan pants, gray pants, black pants, you yeah, know, exactly. or a skirt or two 
or a dress or, you know, a blazer or some sweaters, you know, you really just start to kind of like take these core pieces and then say, okay, well, with these different necklaces or these different shoes, I can start to make these outfits look very different. Um, If you're really struggling, I think this can be a place where you know, depending on if you get the right person, you can make, I think you can still make appointments at Nordstrom and they will, like someone will take you around. When I had to get a wardrobe for my summer associate job, um, because I hadn't worked in an office formally in a couple of years and my stuff was falling apart at that point, (laughs) um, I went to Nordstrom and I was basically like, hey, I, I have this new job at a law firm and I need to like like, here's my budget, and I've got to come up with something to wear. And she did. She was like, here are some black pants. Here are some yeah. tan this pants. This is what people do. This is what people do. You <laughs> and know. they love fashion. And, right. <laughs> they and love they love it. You. <laughs> and they will often, you know, tell you, if, if anyone's very good, they will tell you, like, no, that's not for you. And I think that that is, you know, very interesting yeah. as well. I think asking for help from whomever on this, even mm-hmm. if it's just a friend who has a good eye for these things yep. and is organized and logical and kind of understands what you need. You know, and it also depends where you work. I mean, I went out and got this, like, very nice business casual wardrobe and then i went to work at a firm that basically everyone wore jeans every day Mm -hmm. so okay that was probably a waste of time and energy right so you know we mentioned that the consignment shops can be interesting places to check out um if you're looking for individual items um i think the other thing that if you live in an area or go to a law school where you don't have access to large department stores um amazon wardrobe is kind of fascinating i don't know Hmm. have you done this i've done this with shoes more but i know you can do it with clothes where without paying for it you can basically order a whole bunch of stuff to be sent to you and you have like a week to Mm. dry it on and then you send back whatever you don't want so here's the warning i did this with shoes you have to really tell yourself how much you're allowed to keep because the problem was i like kept more like one extra pair that i wasn't supposed to keep but i did have a situation where I was looking for like a pair of black boots Mm -hmm. Um, and I wear a size 10 which is a pretty big women's size and oftentimes like stores won't always have size 10s and so you just went on Amazon and I was like okay send me five pairs of these black boots all that are my size they arrived I tried on all five I picked one and I sent the rest back so maybe not the like smallest carbon footprint for shopping but on the other hand it can get you you know what you need um, especially for an event or if you're looking for a great pair of heels and you're like I need a pair of black heels right you know you can do it that way so if you're feeling stretched for time um, in a way that you want to be able to try stuff on without you know spending money and then having to return things Amazon like most things in life has already solved that problem Right. And how do, have you ever tried any of these like online shopping subscription services, Stitch Fitch, or like what are some other ones? Uh, there's an MM LaFleur, which is a newish mm. one that does like professional, more I professional just Stitch Fitch in like one of the, uh, one of the metro stations in San yeah. Francisco. They've like so, blanketed it. Like, yeah. Oh, your kids can do it. You can do it. Your husband can do it. <laughs> so I did Stitch Fix like, yeah, I'm oh, mispronouncing that's it, but fine. whatever. <laughs> um, like three or four years ago. Um, I I definitely think that the subscription boxes can be helpful or not helpful. I think that where it kind of got for for me was like I ended up keeping stuff that I wouldn't didn't necessarily need. It was just it kept coming. Yeah, I just kept coming to my house. You can use these services to make very specific requests. So like if you're like I need jeans, and then they'll send you like more jeans. Yeah. Um. So it it can help. Or if you're really lost, you know, you tell them about your body type and they're supposed to send you things that look good on you. But then I also started to find that sometimes the pieces became repetitive. Um, So I think you got to see whether it works for you. Um, But there's very little harm in trying some of these services because you can send it all back. You can send it all back. Um, And, you know, if you buy a few things, it really becomes a wash. Uh, But if you are one of those people who has trouble dressing themselves, like you could say, like, I'm starting a professional job and I need help. Yeah. Um, You you basically kind of build your capsule wardrobe maybe and then, you know, take a pass. Exactly. So I think that it's worth, you know, trying things out, especially if you are someone who just can't drag themselves. Yeah. We used to use one that was founded by a former lawyer, actually. Unfortunately, I think they're not really around anymore, but they would like go shopping for you and come to your house. That That was was pretty magic. Yeah. I think she moved (laughs) to Texas, actually. I follow her on Instagram. But um, that was great. It was. Loved it. Yep. So the other kind of piece of this is kind of simplifying your closets (laughs) and doing a closet clean out, which I think is going to be one of my goals for my next year my birthday's mm. coming up and it's on my list of like things to do is control my closet more but um i have been kind of taking like small bites at dealing with my stuff and i went through and decided uh, a while back that i was going to clean out my lingerie dresser mm. i found an entire drawer of socks that i didn't even know i had wow no joke 
and that most of those socks has holes in them and were literally like unwearable. Yeah, I actually just last week ordered some more socks because the socks that I had all had holes in them. It was like a six pack and I yeah. had like a little of different I colors know. and I wore them every day for like two years yeah. and they have holes in them. Yeah. And it was really, I was like, oh, it's going to be such a hassle to find them. I mean, like, I just had to go on Amazon and find the order I placed two years ago and buy the same ones. And now I have them and it's yeah. really magic. I went to. None of, my, none of my socks have holes in them and I can throw out all the other ones. Right. I did this exercise and then I went to Target and I was like, I will just replace these socks. <laughs> and then I like, now and I open it up and I'm like, all these socks are wearable. Amazing. They all have matches. They all, yeah. Yeah. It just, like, it's, an, it's a minor annoyance that continues unless you deal with it. It is. And, you know, the other part of this is, you know, what do you do with all this stuff once you clean out your clothes? closet and so I think they're depending on where you live like in the Bay Area you can like put them out with your garbage and people they will recycle the fabric so you know you don't have to throw things away but I think it can also be perplexing for folks when they're like but what do I do with all the socks that have yeah holes? I feel bad about the sock that has yeah. a hole in it it's like well it's a sock you had a nice life with the sock yeah. you wore the sock and the sock is like <laughs> sock it, needs it, to needs move to on. Delete, it needs to go on to yeah. a different place but um, and that's okay and that's okay um you know I think there's the art of tidying up, the Marie Kondo stuff, you know, does this bring me joy? But another rule that I have seen um, a fashion blogger talk about was this idea of I shouldn't keep something if it doesn't work with three other things mm. in my closet. So the idea that you just shouldn't have these kind of one-off pieces, right? Um, which I think is actually a pretty decent rule. Like, you know, if you have a jacket that you can't wear with three other things, you know, with three things, yeah. maybe it doesn't have a place in your house. Right, exactly. Or like three different scenarios, at mm -hmm. least. Yeah. Maybe it's something very specific. But yeah, maybe if it's some like incredibly memorable dress that you can literally only wear once, it's like, well, why did you buy that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Go to rent the runway for that. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that is a great segue because I know that um, you and I have both tried out Rent the Runway and many, many moons ago like six years or something ago, we went and saw one of the founders of Rent the Runway Who was talk. a great speaker. She was a great speaker. Still remember some of the stuff she talked about. Yep. And they are a successful um, business partnership as well. It's two women. Mm -hmm. And they're both named Jennifer, I think. Oh, weird. I think they they have the same name. It must but be confusing for people. I know. But uh, people think we're the same person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when they don't think you're a man. And that's true. They do sometimes think I'm a man. Uh, you can Google us. It's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> if they're going to send us an email, Lee is a woman. I'm Thanks. a woman. Um, no, note that. <laughs> yeah. But you and I have both kind of experimented with Rent the Runway. Um, but you've been doing it kind of recently for some of the travel you've been doing. Yeah, so um, I joined Rent the Runway, the unlimited program, because I needed, we were going to this conference in D.C. in the summer, and then I also needed an outfit for that same trip for a baby's first birthday party, Hawaiian-themed in Arkansas. So a long story about that. Yeah, so when, when, we when don't I, have time to yeah, dive into the whole story. Yeah, a whole but, other podcast, but... Yeah. When I'm looking, you know, mentally through my closet, I'm not seeing anything that really jumps out at me as being appropriate for any of these mm -hmm. occasions. So I did rent the runway unlimited so I could get like four different items and kind of mix and match and get some stuff for the conference and get some options for the for the event. Um, and, you know, it worked pretty well because what really works for me is it turns out in major cities like San Francisco, they actually have a place you can go and like try stuff on. So you know, you can order stuff on their website or the app, but you can also go try stuff on. And so for me now, it's almost just like a habit. So, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going up to Tahoe this week. So I need a dress because it's warmer than San Francisco. Let me just pop by Rent the Runway mm -hmm. and I'll trade in a piece of a heavy sweater that I don't need because it's not that cold. And I'll just walk out with a dress. So I think that really worked for me. But, you know, that kind of requires that you be near a store. Mm -hmm. But I think that in a you know, a law firm situation, especially if you're trying to oh, like conserve if I, money. Oh, but if I was in a law firm and I worked downtown, yeah. I would totally do that. I mean, mm -hmm. you can basically just go in, pick up an outfit, you know, for the next week, like the next day even. Right. I mean, I would basically, I basically, even now, I kind of use it as my like, oh, I don't feel like buying something for this event type of thing. And, you know, that event can literally be like, oh, well, I'm going to a barbecue. Uh, I can find a cute barbecue outfit mm -hmm. at the Rent the Runway store. So I think it's worth considering, particularly if you are working in a professional environment in a major city and you just want to go in and switch stuff out constantly. There's really no limit. Right. And, you know, you they dry clean everything. I mean, it's like you're not paying for that on top of everything. Yeah. For me, I actually switched out a pair of pants and got the same size because I was like, well, they're ready to be washed, so I'll take them back. <laughs> And then I couldn't find anything I liked better. And they happened to have the same size, like hanging on the rack. And I was like, well, I liked these. I would wear these again. Mm -hmm. So I walked out with a clean pair. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting. Um, they also have things like accessories that you can um, rent, and, um, and I did it for a little bit, and and that was kind of interesting to be able to buy like or to rent like statement necklaces or stuff like that for you know to take some of those capsule pieces and change how they look. You can do that with accessories. Yeah, and you can also get you know a lot of like sort of professional looking dresses and things like that. Um, if you need to have more of a business, you know, professional but not suit based, mm-hmm. um, maybe online they have more actual suits. Um, but I think it definitely works for you know like your New York summer associate position, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing about the summer jobs is oftentimes, you know, you don't necessarily want to invest in a whole wardrobe that might feel outdated two years. Well, and you're you traveling. You yeah, know, if you're traveling from a different place, you're moving with a couple of suitcases. You know. I think this could be a great option for somebody in that scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, so worth investigating, and it's a pretty amazing business, <laughs> actually, what they've built. I think they mm-hmm. were just valued at a billion dollars. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So um, if you are just listening to this and your head is spinning because you don't like clothing shopping and you just feel like you can't do it, I think this is where some fashion blogs um, can come into play, shops like Nordstrom or other big department stores. Uh, one of the clothing um, or the fashion blogs that I follow is a woman who definitely targets more like a 30 to 40 something audience. But I think one of the things that's interesting is she has a lot of professional dress. And I think what can be tough is when you are in your 20s and early 30s is making that shift from I'm in my 20s and early 30s. And like, what am I supposed to wear in an office environment? Right, with so people? people take you seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that, you know, struck me about her blog is she was just very honest about her discussions with women and i think this goes back to the book that you were mentioning earlier about being beautiful what's the name i totally uh, forgot beyond, beautiful, beyond beautiful i think um was just about like what we do as women with clothes you know we keep clothes in our closets that don't fit <laughs> right. and we buy clothes that don't fit with this idea of like maybe it will fit right I one will, day i'll fit into one this. day i'll fit into <laughs> this and um you know i think as someone who's had you know two kids uh, it's hard because you're like, will that fit again? Well, that won't fit again. And her whole thing was, if it doesn't fit, it shouldn't be in your closet. You mm. can either get rid of it or if you just can't let it go, you put it in a, a bin or a box and like move it to the garage or move it out. But there's nothing good that comes from keeping, I guess if you have like a goal set of jeans or whatever, but that, that could be kind of toxic as well. But it's yeah. like no benefit to having a bunch of stuff in your closet that you can't wear. Like right. what should what's in your closet should be stuff that you wear. And if you don't wear it, it should leave. You yeah, know, and I think, I think that's a good approach. I think it's a very kind of freeing approach when you think about it, um, because I think we've all been guilty of buying something and saying that we will work our way into it. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. That for me, it's like I'll buy. I I tended to buy pieces like mostly that was like for a life that didn't fit. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's true too. <laughs> like these were aspirational pieces for experiences that I thought maybe I would have at one point, and it, it, you're just like don't do that unless you have. That's why I rent the runways, Greg. I'm like, well, now if I ever need to attend that mm-hmm. sort of fancy cocktail party I was planning on attending, I'll just go there and get something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it can be. Really great, um, you know, and I have friends, especially like I've talked about like post-pregnancy bodies and things like that. If they're like, my body's constantly changing. Why am I going to invest in a whole bunch of clothes yeah. knowing that I don't know what I'm going to look like? In it's basically like clothing months. as a service. Yeah. So it's it's fascinating. But I think the moral of the story is that, you know, with a little creativity, I think that you can save some money, which is good for just about everyone in law school, mm-hmm. and look professional, um, and actually de-stress because there are reasons why people like Barack Obama and Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs they simplified their clothes, like Steve Jobs. Yeah. Oh, and who's the who's the lady who's being sued for fraud? Therma the the blood test. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I'm and, forgetting uh, about Elizabeth it. Theros or whatever. There, yeah, yeah Elizabeth. Theranos was the yeah. product. But anyway, she dressed like Steve Jobs. She no, only she wore. wanted to be Steve Jobs. Right, she did. But um, but anyway, there are reasons why people um, choose to really limit their choices because it becomes so stressful. And it's important to remember, I think, when we see when you know women who we consider super polished like they have stylists and people yeah. who shop for them yeah exactly it someone's is, handing them those clothes how many hands them those clothes or they get those clothes tailored to look perfect for them i think we all have to check ourselves in the social media world um to have realistic expectations um yeah I, I had a certain pair of shoes that when i was a lawyer and i was going to an event i pretty much always wore and it got to the point where a friend of mine who would see me leaving the house was like oh are you going to a lawyer event i'm like how do you know she's like you have your lawyer shoes on yeah and, you know they were like 
I think black patent leather loafers mm-hmm. or something. It was just one of the things she's like, yeah, I know you're going yeah. to law your thing. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but it was really easy. Yeah. One other tip um, that I should raise is that you should not be scared of getting somebody to um, tailor your clothes for you. Oh, yeah. I think that that is something that a lot of people feel uncomfortable about. I definitely have jeans I've bought that need to be hemmed by like a couple of centimeters and they've been hanging in my closet for yeah. multiple so, years. So unworn <laughs> because should, I did not take them to exactly. the tailor. Exactly. <laughs> like take stuff to the tailor because I think that like if you are someone who you know, isn't the exact size of the stuff on the rack that um, like a little bit of investment, especially if you're buying a piece for an interview or something like that. And like the jacket sleeves need to be well, shortened. And a lot of places like higher end places will actually tailor for you. Yeah, I think Nordstrom does. Bloomingdale's, Bloomingdale's does. does. As well. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you, you know, utilize all of those options because having it actually fit your body is going to make it look a lot better. Absolutely. Well, with that, unfortunately, we are out of time. If you enjoyed this episode of the Law School Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review or rating on your favorite listening app. We'd really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to Lee or Allison at lee at lawschooltoolbox.com or allison at lawschooltoolbox.com. Or you can always contact us via our website contact form at lawschooltoolbox.com. Thanks for listening and we'll talk soon.